Hi friends, it's another crazy windy day in my Virginia garden, but I need to get some things planted. So I thought I'd take you along for it. I have hardened off my onions, several of my, you can see down here, several of my cooler weather flowers, tons of herbs, all sorts of things. I have to get planted out in the raised bed garden, cut flower garden, and then I have a ton of other perennials, annuals, shrubs, all sorts of things that I have accumulated over the last several months to be planted out in our front garden. So I'm hoping I can get to that, but at least I need to get to these onions and herbs planted as well as the cut flowers. So I'm gonna take you along as we do that. You'll have to bear with me on the wind today because obviously it's out of my control and it's quite windy. So let's go plant in the raised bed garden. I'm in the garden now and I want to show you the couple of spots that I am going to put these onions in. I'm growing three different varieties. If you didn't see my how to start onions from seed video, I'll link that in the description. But this year I'm growing candy onion, calibra, and monastrel onions. Monastrel is the red onion and then the other two are sweet yellows. So strawberries make a great companion to onions. So I have a blank spot right there in the strawberry garden and I'm going to put one of the varieties, probably the red monastrels, here in the strawberry garden. Then I also have an area with some beets and beets make great companions for onions. I'm gonna put another variety there with the beets. So then I have one more bed that has celery. I'm gonna put the onion, the rest of the onions there. And when the celery is ready to be harvested, it'll about be time to put my tomatoes outside. So the tomatoes will go where the celery was and tomatoes are also a great companion plant for onions. So this is our strawberry bed, which if you don't know, strawberries are perennial. They'll just keep coming back year after year. Strawberries do eventually need to be replaced. They tend to have, they're a short-lived perennial. They tend to have anywhere from like three to four, sometimes five years of really good production. And after that, you kind of replace your plants. So I have this space in between two of our varieties that I am going to use for my onions. First up, just to get them off on the right start and amend my soil, I am gonna put down some starter fertilizer. This is just a uh, biotone starter fertilizer. If you use any sort of other uh, garden fertilizer would be great or starter fertilizer. And all I'm gonna do is mix this in, scratch it into the soil and it's starting to rain. Oh my goodness, we weren't supposed to have rain today. This spring weather has been so unpredictable. Right, so it is starting to rain. I have blue skies all around me, so I assume it's gonna be very short-lived rain. So Instagram or Amazon served me an ad and I've bought it instantly. It's called a seeding square. So I thought I would try this. Basically it has color-coded little dots and it gets you to properly space all of your plantings, get them in nice grids. And that is one thing I am absolutely terrible about and honestly, I really haven't cared that much about, but I thought I'd try it and just see how this works. But you find whatever crop you're growing and it tells you which color spacing to use. So based on the chart, I wanna go with the yellow dots. That's about four inches apart for all the onions. And supposedly all you do is you push it down into your ground to get your nice grid. And it comes with this little dibbler and I'm gonna poke my holes on all of the yellow squares. And then I should end up with, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Nine holes that are all spaced four inches apart. And then I just move forward. This is a pretty cool tool. I don't know if I'll always use it, but for something like onions where I need all of them to be spaced four inches apart. And I think it would look kind of pretty to have them all in even, Lee space rose. This is kind of fun. So here's a close up of what it looks like. Pretty cool and very easy to use. And contrast, I know is kind of hard to pick up on camera, but you can see I've got all my holes just nicely spaced four inches apart. So now I'm just gonna pop each little individual onion seedling in these holes. So if you heavily seed your onions like this, you can really just kind of gently tease them apart and have all of your individual onions. They separate really easily. So just from that little cell, I have, what is that? Six little onions. And I am just gonna stick them in the ground. 
And when you first plant your onions, they might look a little floppy because their root system is so small and needs time to develop, but they will bulk up and they will stand right back up in a couple days. Look at those pretty rows. I have to say that seating square was pretty helpful. You could definitely make something yourself similarly, but it was fun little purchase to see that it actually works. You can see those pretty rows. They're all evenly spaced. In the next couple of days, they will perk up. They're not all flopped over, but they are a little, a little flimsy looking, but they'll, they'll bulk up very quickly. One thing I forgot to do in that other bed, which I'll go back and do, and I'm going to do for these beds going forward is add blood meal to the soil and work that in. So onions are heavy feeders and they really benefit from a lot of nitrogen because that'll produce more leafy growth, which in turn will produce more energy to store down in the bulb. So it seems strange to add heavy nitrogen for onions since they're forming a bulb, but it's actually one of the tricks to get a big onion. So I'm going to amend my soil with this blood meal and add in the Biotone starter fertilizer. And then for that bed back there that I already planted up with the red onions, I will just top dress it and kind of scratch this into the surface and that works as well. So if you have already planted your onions, you can go back and add the blood meal. And then I do recommend fertilizing onions once a month throughout the growing season until harvest. I'm going to use the seating square again to create my nice little holes. These are all my Calibra onions. They are all planted. Such pretty tidy little rows. I did leave this spot open because I wanted to save some onions to give to a friend. So just creates more area to plant something else. So this last spot has some beets growing. You can kind of see they're real tiny little seedlings that I direct sowed about three weeks ago next to these violas and pansies. So right here in the middle, whoop, right here in the middle, I am going to do the rest of the onions. They're the candy onions. Have all the onions planted and so now I'm gonna get these herb seedlings in the ground. This is a mix of flat leaf parsley, some sage, Greek oregano, German winter thyme, sweet marjoram, and two different varieties of basil. One is compact basil that will be for more like culinary herb basil and then I have everleaf Thai towers which is gonna be uh, for cutting and flower arrangements. And I also have some more basil inside that's not quite ready to be planted out that is also going to be for cut flowers. If you don't use basil or aren't familiar with using basil in arrangements, it is awesome. It makes just a great filler for all of your flower arrangements. So these are going to be mostly planted in my herb bed, which is right here behind me. But then I'm also going to intersperse some of them throughout the garden, just 
kind of mix it up all throughout the garden because a lot of these help deter pests. So a lot of these herbs you can direct sow. I chose not to direct sow them this time because I wanted to get a jump start on their growth. So I'm gonna do the same thing I have been doing and just amend the soil with some starter fertilizer before I plant my seedlings. And you can't tell, but right here, I have three rows of romaine um, lettuce that I want to form into heads. So I'm gonna leave space in the center for those lettuces to mature. I don't know if you can see the cilantro and just how big it is, but it is well over a foot tall. It's probably at least 18 inches. And for a cilantro to get this big and healthy without bolting and going to seed is pretty unusual. I remember it's a variety from Johnny's Seeds that is a slow to bolt variety. So I'll have to go write it down and, or I'll have to go look it up and put it on the screen, but it is awesome. So I'm gonna start here with some of my culinary basil. And if you don't follow me on Instagram and you didn't see this hack for getting your seedlings out of their uh, cells, this is just a landscape staple and you just insert it, gently squeeze, and then you can pull your whole seedling out. It's so easy. So much better than trying to squeeze them out or pull them out. So I have some cilantro that I direct sowed down here for another harvest and crop of cilantro because eventually this will go to seed. So the next group of cilantro is gonna be down here. So I'm gonna till this up and mix in my starter fertilizer and probably, I think I'm gonna do my sweet marjoram down here. And in here actually is a bunch of little baby chives that I seeded. I don't think you can see those. This is Greek oregano and I grew some more, so I'm just gonna add to this area. This one overwintered really well, which if you aren't familiar, oregano is a perennial. You can see my lettuce seedlings here. I'm gonna have to come in and thin them pretty soon. So here I have some curly parsley, which I will never not grow curly parsley. One, because I love parsley, and two, because it's so nostalgic for me. My grandmother on my mother's side would have a big swath of curly parsley that was always just giant and lush and green leading up to the front uh, steps of her house. And when we would go visit in the summertime, it was just it was always there. It was such a strong presence of my memories of my grandma. And I would always pick on, you know, I would always pick it and eat it. And it was just, it was so fun. So those memories of her are one reason why I grow curly parsley. I think it's also delicious. I don't know why it's kind of gone out of, uh, I don't know why I say fashion, but I just don't feel like it's as popular as it used to be. And then I am going to also throw in my flat leaf parsley here as well. And you can kind of see I have a bunch of dill seedlings coming up here. And this parsley all overwintered. I, they were little baby plants last fall and they survived the winter. They looked a little rough. I cut back the dead and they have just greened right up. And this variety is Giant of Italy. So I think I'm just gonna put like a little patch here and I'm gonna put some on the other side. 
because this curly parsley will get pretty big. Next up, I have my thyme. This is German winter thyme, and I am gonna just add to that over here. So lastly, I actually purchased a creeping rosemary at a nursery down in Wilmington the other week. So I'm gonna plant that right here in the front because I just thought it'd be really pretty to just let that creep and fall over the edge of the bed. So I'm gonna go grab that real quick. Isn't this pretty? This is the trailing or creeping rosemary that I just picked up. And you can tell this one <laughs> was greenhouse grown. It is so lush and dark green and healthy and not does not have any winter burn like my other rosemary. But I did have to harden this one off. So that's just a reminder to you. If you do pick up anything from a greenhouse that has been grown in the greenhouse and they have not pulled it out at the greenhouse at all, you do need to harden those plants off just like you would your seedlings. So let's get this in the ground. And it is a little wet from all the rain we've had because he's been hardening off outside. And because rosemary does not like to be really wet, I won't water this in when I water in all of my other seedlings. So all I have left to plant is this basil everleaf Thai towers and some more sage. So I'm gonna go look for some spots in the garden and just pop these in. So this is my broccoli bed. I have broccoli and some cauliflower in here. The cauliflower are just little seedlings, but because I have broccoli in here, I'm gonna put the sage because sage is a great companion for broccoli. This will primarily be sage for cutting for flower arrangements over here. But in the meantime, it'll help deter some pests. You can kind of see how this sage, because I had it so crowded in there with the other herbs, it was reaching for the light. So it really needs to be pinched back. But it will recover, it'll be fine. So this bed will eventually have some of my peppers and basil and peppers make good companions. So I'm gonna put them here. I think I'm just gonna do some rows of them along this edge. It feels so good to get that accomplished. I've got all my herb seedlings planted out. I got all the onions planted out. Just a couple less things in the grow room to take care of. I have some more things that I'm hardening off that will be planted out very soon. But it's just so nice to have those in the ground. It's adding so much freshness and green. The garden is starting to look alive again. There's the onions and there's more herbs over there. My broccoli, I've got chives. Garlic is looking incredible. That's all garlic and it is really bulking up, which is awesome. I have four, five different varieties of garlic, which I'll take you along before the harvest of that in a few months but it feels good to get this checked off my to-do list. This wind, <laughs> I'm sorry if the audio has been terrible, but it is what it is. All right, one last thing before I head inside. Our irrigation is not yet turned on. It's time to turn it on. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Hopefully in the next couple of days we get to turn it on. So I need to water everything in. I'm gonna grab the hose and water them in by hand. I really appreciate you watching. And if you don't mind liking this video, commenting, even just an emoji comment, sharing it with a friend, it goes a long way to support my channel, support me, and it would just mean the absolute world to me if you did that.
Thanks for gardening with me today. Pink spot right here. Whoop, I have a spider. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry about that. I felt the spider crawling on my arm. Ooh.